In this video, I'm going to give you a load of information about quote, order, and invoice templates. So we're going to see what order templates are, we're going to see where to set your default templates, how to create a new template, how to work with custom fields on order templates, how to add columns to the table of products, and then finally editing templates with HTML and CSS, and tips for working with templates. A template is used when you want to email or print a copy of an order, and it could be any type of order, so sales or purchase orders. So let's hit email or print, which opens up a screen which uses the default order template, and you can see here that information specific to this order, such as the reference, has been brought in. We can understand a little bit more about what's going on here if we actually go to edit the template itself, which you can do from this screen where we can see a widget, this order reference, and that's been replaced by the reference for this specific order. In a similar way, we've got a logo on the left-hand side, a billing address, a table of products, and then some customer details. So this is something you might want to email or perhaps print out. But templates don't need to look like this at all. If we go to change the template, we can actually choose update to your order, which is simply an email template. And in a similar way, we've got widgets being replaced by order-specific information, so the customer name, the order reference, and its current status. Email or print templates can also be used when you're batch updating sales. So let's select a load, click to update the status, and then we can choose one of our templates to send an email to the customer. So when I printed that order just now, it used the default template that I've got set up in my channel branding, and each of your different channel brands can have different default templates. So from setup, company information, you can see all of your channel brands. And when you edit the channel brand, and go to the templates tab, you can choose which of your templates is used by default when you're printing, sending emails, and so on. There's a separate video which gives you a load more information all about channel branding. So let's move on to creating new templates. From the setup area, go to templates, and then document templates. Click to add a template, which needs a title and some content. If you're going to email this template, then the template title is also used as the email subject. So let's give it something the customer will understand. It's also a great idea to put a reference in here. And there we've inserted the widget that will be replaced by the order reference. We then start working on the body. You can type straight into this box, and when you want to drop a widget in, you need to choose to insert a field at the relevant place. So let's choose the contact first name. So dear contact first name, thanks for your order. For this particular template, we'd probably want to insert a table of products. So under the orders section here, let's insert a table of products. And we'll see how to customize that at the end of this video. Then we'll simply save changes. If you're experienced with HTML and CSS, you can actually flip to the HTML mode and edit the code directly. Now let's go back to a sales order and use that template. We'll go email slash print, which uses our default order template as set up in the channel branding. What we need to do is simply hit change template and then choose our order confirmation. And there we can see the customer's first name and then a table of products. Now what we're going to do is copy the order template to create something called a pro forma invoice. So first of all, drop into the template you want to copy flip to HTML mode, select all, and then copy the raw HTML, go back to the list of templates, add a new template, give it a title, and notice that I'm using the order reference rather than the invoice reference widget, because typically when you raise a pro forma, the order is not yet invoiced, so you don't have an invoice number. Flip to HTML mode, paste your content in, and then save. Now you can make any changes you might need. All the widgets available are in this list up here. So general information such as company details, and this company information, don't forget, comes from the channel brand that's associated to the channel for that particular order. Then you've got contact details, which come from the customer or supplier record. Invoice reminder information. There's a widget that shows a customer's statement of account. Various order specific information. And then invoice information on that order the specific orders customer data, billing data, and delivery data. And then if you're making an inventory transfer, it's the transfer reference. And then you can see at the bottom we've got custom fields. So these are extra fields you might have added to your sale. 
If we pop along over to a sale, you'll see in the Custom Fields tab, I've entered a delivery code. Let's put that field at the bottom of our order printout. So let's just type delivery code and then drop the widget in. So let's scroll down to Custom Fields and choose delivery code. And you can see here, it's the PCF code that you specified when you created that custom field. Let's make the font orange and large and then save. Next time we use that template, you can see the custom field information is being brought in. Let's say we want to change the order of columns that appear on this table, perhaps remove or add columns. Go to edit the template in the normal way, and then at the bottom of the screen, you can see we can customize the columns. So you can either drop in a pre-configured column set, and let's just simply choose one, or you can actually hard code it in this field below. Here we've got three columns, name, item net, and row net. And each column has got a pair of values, the column code and then the column name. And you can actually include product custom fields in this table too. So if we wanted to enter the amount of tax on this specific row, we add a pipe to separate the columns, then we add the code, row underscore gross, and then we give it a name, let's just call it gross. Let's save that. And next time we view the template, you can see we've just got the four columns we've specified with gross at the end. Let's say your product has got a custom field, in this case a commodity code, that you want to show on every row of the order template. First of all, you need to go to the Product Custom Field Setup screen, where you're going to copy the field code for the custom field we want to add as a column. So let's copy that, then go back to the Edit Template screen. Let's add a column at the end. We'll paste in the PCF code and give it a column header. And next time we use the template, you can see the Product Custom Field value is being brought out on the product table. If you wanted to right align the column, or do any other formatting, you'd use something called CSS, which is a web-based formatting technique. I'm going to use one of the Bright Pearl sample templates to show you how this works, and if I click into one of these templates, you can see that it's just HTML code, and at the top there's a style chunk, and what this is doing is it's basically reducing the font size of most of the fields. Let's copy this and paste it into the HTML section of an existing template. So we need to remove the existing code and paste in the new code. Let's save changes, where we can see a visual representation of that template code. To preview it, we go to the Goods Out Note screen and print a Goods Out Note using that template, where we can see the two column header, which is designed for a peel off label. The actual font size itself of the content has been shrunk down to 10 pixels. We've got some example CSS at the URL that you can see on screen, and if you want to do things outside of these examples, then work with any experienced web designer. Which takes me finally onto the tips for working with templates. Don't use fixed width tables, use percentage of the overall page size. Go easy on the formatting with the WYSIWYG editor, and that's the editor that you can see in the visual mode. It's generally better to do things by CSS. But remember that the PDF generator that Brightpol uses does not understand all CSS. And there's a few examples there of the CSS that it doesn't recognize. And to make sure that your final design is actually going to work as intended, make sure that you generate a real PDF and send it to yourself by email. So that takes us to the end of the video where we see how to work with quote, order and invoice templates.